Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 1, where today's goal is to be able to solve one-step equations. All right, so we're going to start off with a couple of definitions. The first one is an equation. An equation is a statement with two expressions with an equal sign between them. An example of this might be something like 2x plus 7 equals 8. Next up is a solution. A solution is any value for a variable that would make the equation true. If we were given an equation x plus 2 equals 7, then 5 would be a solution for x because when you plug 5 in and get 5 plus 2, it equals 7, making the statement true. Finally, we're going to talk about inverse operations, which are operations that undo each other. These are particularly important in the solving process because they allow you to isolate a variable, which is the goal of the solving process. Inverse operations come in pairs, so it's important to understand that addition and subtraction will undo each other, and multiplication and division will undo each other. So let's put this in action and do some examples. I'm going to do x plus 4 equals 8. I see the operation of addition, and I want to undo that with subtraction. So I am going to subtract 4 from both sides. Whatever you do to one side needs to be done to both sides. So when this 4 gets undone from the left side, I'm left with just x. And then 8 minus 4 equals 4, giving us a final answer of x equals 4. Let's do a subtraction problem. x minus 24 equals 17. The thing keeping x from being alone is the subtraction of 24. To undo subtraction, we want to do addition. So we're going to add 24. Do it to one side. you got to do it to both sides of the equation. This makes the 24 go away, so we get x equals, and 17 plus 24 equals 41, giving us a final answer of x equals 41. Let's move on to multiplication and division. In this problem, I have 5x, which is really 5 times x. To undo multiplication, we do division. I write my division like a fraction. I think that's a little bit easier and more organized. Whatever I do to the left, I'm going to do to the right. When you divide 5 by 5, we're going to be left with x. It's really 1x, but that 1 disappears because 1 times anything is just that thing. So we have 1x. Negative 30 divided by 5 equals 6, and we get a final answer of x equals 6. Let's move on to number 4. This is saying that x is being divided by negative 7. To undo division, we want to do multiplication. So I am going to multiply by negative 7. It's important to understand that this multiplication happens on the top of a fraction, not the bottom. We want there to be both a negative 7 on the top and bottom so that they divide to make a 1, making that disappear and leaving x alone. But if I do that to the top, I have to do it to the top of both sides. So I do that over here, multiply 3 by negative 7, and we're left with x on the left equals negative 21. And that's our final answer. Now, we're going to move on to the two harder problems in this lesson, and that's multiplying by the reciprocal. If you ever have a fraction in front of your variable. So this is our variable, this is our coefficient. If that coefficient is a fraction, you need to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm actually going to rewrite this problem off to the side because I don't like the way it's currently written. This negative symbol, I like to move it to the top. It gets confusing when it's written off to the side. So I'm going to put this negative on top and write negative 2 thirds x equals negative 12. Now, to get rid of this negative 2 on the top of this fraction, to undo that multiplication, I want to do some division. So I'm going to put a negative 2 on the bottom. I'm going to get rid of this arrow so you can see. I'm going to put a negative 2 on this bottom. That would allow me to cancel out the negative 2's by creating a 1. Now, I also need to address this 3 on the bottom. If I want to get rid of this 3 on the bottom, 
I want there to be a 3 on the top. That will cancel out the 3. Now, what I've really done is created the fraction 3 over negative 2. The 3's will cancel, and the negative 2's will cancel, leaving us with just the x. This is called multiplying by the reciprocal. Notice that 3 over negative 2, this, is the flip of the original fraction. And that will always work. If you ever have a fraction in front of your coefficient, flip the fraction, creating the reciprocal, and multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So this will cancel out, and whatever I did to the left, I'll do to the right. So I'm going to put a 3 over negative 2 here. I'm going to be left with x on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to do multiplication of fractions. I'm going to put a 1 below the 12 and do negative 12 times 3, which is negative 36, and 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. And then when I do the division of negative 36 divided by negative 2, I get an answer of 18. In this next problem, number 6, I'm not going to have to do quite as much work. I know the rule now that if there's a fraction in front, I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds to both sides. That's going to cancel out the 4 and the 3, leaving us with just the x. And 4 fifths times 4 thirds, 4 and 4 make 16, and 5 and 3 make 15, giving us a final answer of x equals 16 fifteenths. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. This lesson was all about undoing. If you have multiplication or division, you can undo it with the other one. If you have multiplication, you can undo it with division, vice versa. Same thing with addition and subtraction. They can undo each other. And at the end of the lesson, we learned that if you have a fraction as the coefficient, so just x and a fraction, you can get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal. If you have any other big takeaways, write them down now. Otherwise, see you next time.